In this video, we're going to be building the cylinder head and fitting it to my Zeb1 Super 6 engine. The first thing I have to do is take the cylinder head out into the garden and give it a really good clean. I put it on a stand so I can get around all sides and give it a good squirt over with my pink bike cleaner. I squirt some cleaner into the always until it bubbles up to the cam bearings. Then I turn it over and give it a good squirt underneath. This is the fun bit. I got absolutely soaked, but it was a hot day. You can see the water coming out of the cam bearings like miniature fountains, showing I've got a good flow cleaning out all the debris. The birds have a quick look to see what's going on, but carry on eating. I shake off some of the water, then take it across to my barbecue to give it a bit of a warm up. This is the best way to get rid of the water because it just evaporates away. I can smell something cooking in the kitchen. So I pop in to have a look and Trace is making some cakes. I pinch one, I hope she doesn't notice. Proper nice. Should I pinch another cake? No, I better not. I pop outside and the head's all dry. So now I can take it into the garage to start the assembly. The first thing I did was give it a good blow off with the airline just to make sure all the moisture's out of the threads and the oilways. Then I have to replace the four tapered aluminium bungs that go in the oilway drillings each side of the cylinder head. I use a little bit of Loctite just to make sure that it's not really needed. I use a small punch and a hammer to hammer them home. They're quite tight, but they get in eventually. The oil pressure on a Z1 is relatively low for engines because of its roller bearing crank design, so these bungs are never going to come out. The next thing I need to do is grind the valves. I put a thin smear of grinding paste on the valve and place it into the cylinder head. Then, using a suction cup on a stick, I stick this to the valve and push down very slightly and rotating back and forth by hand until you get a nice surface finish on the valve with no pitting or marks. It can take quite a while, but luckily my valves are in very good condition, so it only took a few minutes. After several minutes of grinding, I remove the valve and give it a clean and have a look at the surface and it's lovely, nice and gray all the way around. So that valve's done. I use a bit of brake cleaner on the cloth then give the valve seat a good wipe round and have a look at the surface. It's nice and grey and continuous, so that valve is now done. With all the valves ground in, the next thing to do is to assemble the springs and collets. But first, I have to put in the spring protectors at the bottom. This stops the springs pummeling their way into the cylinder head during operation. The next thing to do is to fit the new valve stem seals. Please push on to the end of the valve guides. I use a screwdriver to line them up to let them drop down. It makes it much easier in the deep pockets. With the valve stem seal on top of the valve guide, I use my thumb to gently push it down. With all the valve stem seals fitted, the next thing I need to do is to replace the valves. I marked them when I took them out to make sure they go back in the right holes. I apply a bit of grease to the valve and then slide it into the cylinder head, being careful to push it down past the seal nicely. We don't want to damage the lip. With all the valves in position, the next thing to do is to fit the springs. I do this one at a time using my old vintage valve spring compressor. I had to modify it slightly for the Z1 engine, but it works great. With a spring compressed, I can now fit the two split collets.
With the first pair of collets fitted and the valve spring compressor removed, I repeat the process on the other valves. Then I can fit the buckets. The buckets hold the shims, which are used for adjusting the valves on the Z1 engine, and they fit on top of the buckets, which is great because I can change them without taking out the camshafts. With all the valves in and the cylinder head basically finished, I check the engine to make sure it's ready to put the cylinder head on. I feel for the cam chain to make sure it's on the bottom sprocket, engaged nicely, which it is, that's good. Then I notice that the manifold's missing off the back of the engine, and I had a quick look and I don't have one. And that really needs to go on, really. Hello, is that Pete again, DK Motorcycles? Great. Right, I'm building my engine, and I've just noticed I'm missing the manifold on the back of the engine where the pressure switch goes. Do you think you can see if you've got one? Yes, Alan, yeah. I'm pretty sure I've got one. Hang on. Yeah, I've got one. Great, can you send it straight down? Hang on a sec. 17, 14 mil. Yeah, I've got it. Brilliant. Brilliant, thank you. Bye. Okay, Alan, bye. First thing the next day, I receive a package from DK Motorcycles. It's my manifold. I'm really pleased. It looks amazing. It's just got a little bit of corrosion in a few places, but I soon remove that with my rotary wire brush. With the manifold clean, I fit two new O-ring seals. I use these quad seals because they've actually got four sealing lips rather than two on a standard O-ring. You can buy them in packs various sizes on eBay and they're great for this application so that just sits on top of there in the recess and the manifold goes on with four bolts. Job done. With the cylinder head fitted and the head bolts tightened down the next thing I did was put a little bit of anti-scuffing paste on all the camshaft bearings. Then I fitted the exhaust camshaft by threading it through the chain and placing it in the bearings. And then I fitted the inlet camshaft in a similar manner. I set the two middle pistons at bottom dead center. Then I can use the original cam timing marks for the Kawasaki Z1 I first align the timing marks on the exhaust camshaft sprocket, then count back the pins on the chain and to the 28th pin, which must line up with a line on the camshaft sprocket that says 28. I then refit the central tensioning pulley and release the cam chain tensioner and give the engine a good turnover at least two times, listening very carefully for any noises and feeling for any hard spots, which there weren't. I stop the engine with the first exhaust cam lobe in the up position and then check the gap with my feeler gauges. Well this one's half a millimetre so that definitely needs adjustment. You need a special tool to hold the valve bucket down while you remove the shim but you can make one from an old Hagon shock adjuster. The first thing I do is grip it in my vise and cut off the protruding bit with my hacksaw. Then, using a half round file, clean up the inside surface and deburr. With the inside shape finished, I go out into the garden to use my angle grinder to grind the outside shape. Basically, you just follow the inside shape profile just by eye. I finished the grinding just before it starts to rain, so that was lucky. Well, here it is, all finished. It basically slips in underneath the camshaft and rests on the bucket with the cam in the down position. And as you rotate the engine back, the bucket remains down and allows you to remove the actual shim with a magnet. To work out the correct thickness for the new shim, you measure the original gap, which is half a millimetre. You measure the shim, which is two millimetres. Add the two together, 2.5. Take away the clearance, which is 0.1. That means my new shim has to be 2.4 millimetres thick. I repeat the process for all the valves, then I kick the engine over and feel for compression with my thumb and I'm pleased to feel a decent compression on all six cylinders. 
I fit the six spark plugs and tighten them with my wrench. With all the spark plugs fitted, I kick the engine over by hand just to have a feel and it feels great, really good compression. I can barely kick it over. With the engine feeling great, it's time to fit the rocker cover. I first made a gasket. You can see one of my previous videos to see how I did that. And then I fitted the rubber end caps. Before I fit the cam cover, I put a thin smear of ultra grey on its sealing surface so that when I do, the gasket sticks to the cam cover rather than the engine. This makes it much simpler in the future when I'm checking the valve clearances because the gasket remains with the cam cover when it's removed. And it fits perfect. I'm well pleased with that. Now all I've got to do is put in all the bolts. There's quite a lot of them. So I use my electric drill to spin them down and then just use my T-spanner to tighten them up. <laughs> 